Now you need to remember that trading stock is also an asset account. And the definition of trading stock is that it represents merchandise or goods that were purchased in order to resell at a higher price. Trading stock will be recorded at cost price. And just like any other asset, it will increase on the debit side at cost price and it will decrease on the credit side at cost price. It will increase on the debit side at cost price. It will decrease on the credit side at cost price. Now, the balance of your trading stock account will be on the debit side, just like I'm indicating that my balance on the 1st of May 2020 was 40,000. That's what I'm bringing forward or bringing down from the previous month. Now, at the end of this month, I should have purchased a trading stock. Give me two ways in which you can purchase trading stock. How can you purchase trading stock? It's either you purchase trading stock for cash or you purchase it on credit. Now, if you purchase it for cash, um, you will simply um, debit trading stock and credit bank that's why here yeah, i'm debiting trading stock with bank and this will have been recorded in the cpj and the amount will be um eighty thousand. if i purchase it on credit if we purchase it on credit as the business we will have recorded this um in the creditors journal and two accounts that will have been affected will have been debiting trading stock with the cost price and crediting creditors control that is why here i am debiting trading stock with creditors control and this indicates that i purchased this trading stock on credit when you purchase anything on credit it will be recorded in the creditors journal and then you will simply david this by petty cash this means that you bought trading stock with small amounts of cash now that will be recorded in the pcj and the amount will be 520. now what else will increase trading stock besides purchasing trading stock Trading stock will increase when customers retain goods to us as the business, and therefore it will increase to accounts that will be affected, that affects trading stock whenever sale is affected. Please note that it will be trading stock and the partner to trading stock will be cost of sales, okay? So in this case, I will debit trading stock and I will credit cost of sales. That's why under trading stock, I will write cost of sales. This comes from DAJ. But we only record goods that we returned by the customer, not allowances, only goods. Remember, for allowances, we will not have cost of sales for allowances. Keep that in mind. There is no cost of sales for allowances. Now, the fact that I'm debiting trading stock with cost of sales, um, which comes from your debtors allowances journal this is only the trading stock that was returned by customers okay we are going to credit this by by cost of sales when we sell trading stock trading stock will decrease when we sell it and we can sell trading stock in two ways we can sell trading stock for cash but still even if we sell it for cash we will still debit cost of sales and credit um and credit trading stock. Now, in this case, where do I get this cost of sales? I get it from the CRJ. It represents goods sold for cash. If I sold goods on credit, I will still debit trading stock with the cost price. Um, I mean, I will still debit cost of sales with the cost price and credit trading stock. So whenever you sell goods, remember that you debit trading stock. I mean, you debit cost of sales. Whenever you sell goods, you debit cost of sales and you credit trading stock. Whenever you sell goods, you debit cost of sales and you credit trading stock. Okay. The reason why we debit cost of sales is to apply the merchant principle, which requires us to recognize an expense that relates to income that has been earned. And that's why we have to debit cost of sales and credit trading stock. In this case, that we are crediting trading stock with cost of sales because this is the cost price of goods that have been sold. Therefore, our trading stock will decrease by the cost price of goods that we sold on credit how do i know that this represents goods sold on credit is because this is cost of sales total that comes from your debtors journal and the amount will be twenty five thousand. and then you will simply credit your trading stock 
buy goods that you return. We as the business, we can also return goods to the suppliers, to the creditors. When you return goods to the creditors, you will simply credit your trading stock with um, creditors control. This will be recorded in the CAJ and the amount will be 3,500. Now, this is all I can think about right now that will affect your trading stock account. I'll simply find the total. The biggest side appears to be the debit side. You will take that 136, 320, minus 60,000 on the credit side, minus 25,000 on the credit side, minus 3,500 on the credit side. It will give you a balance carry down. Your balance carry down will be 44,300. This represents the remaining trading stock that has not been sold or returned to the supplier and we will start the new month with that remaining stock of 44,300. In the next video we will be discussing creditors control.